So this is a quick review of the Z Moon uh, 120 watt, uh, 12,000 lumen uh, LED lights. They, uh, I do, I'm not mounting these on a light bar, although they are uh, able to be mounted that way. Uh, all the hardware comes with it, including brackets. There's a couple different uh, possible ways to mount the brackets and it depends on which way you want them to face and whatnot. I am mounting them on a converted school bus to give me more illumination uh, when I am on back roads. Now the lights could be mounted anywhere. I could mount them down low as fog lights and I've decided to mount them up high as general illumination. I'm gonna put them where those inner circles are, those two discs where the uh, lights used to be. Those would have been a flashing yellow, I think. So I'm gonna take those off and then we'll drill holes and mount them on that, run the wires and then put those back up. Now in my case, because I'm mounting on this, I need to find the center. Luckily I've got four holes. I marked what the top hole was so that I, when I put this back in, these holes will line up with the screw holes and I'll have the light facing in the right direction. So I just mark the center and then drill a hole the right size for the bolt. Then once we do that, I got to drill another hole to because this is going to get mounted on here just in such a way with the right one, such a way that it'll be facing down a little bit. So I got to drill another hole over here for the wires go to go through. top. I'm using the, the uh, wooden board here because I'm in an apartment complex. I don't really want to drill a hole in there. They're nice enough to let me stay here, so I don't really want to drill a hole in their driveway. So I'm going to put a hole right there. like that. So now let me get the bolt and we can mount this and I'm going to drill the uh, the other plate first and then we'll get these lights mounted. Now this bracket is going to get mounted like this so the light can be adjusted to uh, point down but the the way the nuts are in here, I don't know if you can see those little nuts at the, uh, the bolts, there's not a whole lot of space in there. So what I'm going to do is put this bolt through the bracket, then attach the bracket to the light, and then we will attach it to the, uh, to the piece that goes on the bus. So first, they come with these little bolts and they supply you with the Allen wrenches to put them in. So let me get them in and then we'll go on. So I've got that on there. And actually, I'm going to center this up a little bit. And it's easy enough to loosen it and adjust side to side, up and down. I've got it set to the maximum at this point so that 
when it's mounted on there, it'll be facing down a little bit out front. It's not going to be shining way down the highway. Right now, to make sure, or at least give it a good shot at not getting uh, water to come in through, I'm going to put a bead of caulk around. And we will do the same where the light goes or where the uh, wires go through. This is up. I want this uh, mounted so that it points down. Make sure I get this in the right direction. And we get that through there. They do supply you with the uh, lock washer and the nut. And once I get this on here, snug down finger tight, then I want to make sure that it's more or less pointing in the right direction. So here's up, that would be bad. That is better. So when this gets mounted, it'll be facing down and forward. So I'm just going to tighten this down. Take another look at it. That looks pretty good to me. Let's see if I can get the wires through here. There we go, a little wire. I'm gonna put some caulk around that and then we'll get up above and do some wiring. Well, now I've got to run wires from there to there and obviously we pull the wires off, they curl up. There's no way I can reach across there. So the, uh, if you ever do any kind of electrical work, people get fish tapes. They're fine. I I really prefer these. There's a 3 16th fiberglass wire running kit from a Harbor Freight. There's 33 feet. Comes in 11 three foot sections. And they uh, screw together like that end on this end. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm gonna put two together and run it from that hole to that hole. So I'm going to uh, cut a piece of wire long enough to go across there and then uh, attach it to that light. We can get that one mounted. We have this stuck in there and I'll be able to reach in and pull this out and pull the wire across. That's the plan. Bert. The way these get attached is with these crimps, the uh, Wire goes inside there and I crimp them down using this tool. The uh, um, another electrical tool that's really good is uh, get a good quality crimper. It also strips the wires and uh, you can get a cheap one and it's going to be a cheap one. I, I used one for years and finally threw it away. It just wore out and I, I got this one. This is much better, much easier to use. So I'm going to get these attached and then we go up there and uh, run the wires through. I'm attaching the wires on the far light. Then I'm going to snake it across, connect it to the wires coming up from a switch I'm putting in and to the other light. So let's get on with that. So we just stick this fish rod through. And try not to get it caught up on anything that's back there. And then you should see it down in there. There it is. So we get that all the way in there. And then we will uh, test fit the disc make sure that this 
insulation because I put I had these off and taped them off when I sprayed foamed them so there's a little bit of spray foam plug in that hole but because I'd accessed that one a few times the uh, the, the uh, spray foam is gone so then we just take this pull the other wires through and now I connect these wires to these wires and connect it all up to the light and we'll get the light in and that's what it looks like close up and again I can adjust these down a little bit well, let's make sure they work and then uh, at night I can play with adjusting them if I need to another handy tool to have is a test light because I can hook up one end to a ground and be able to find out like these nothing happens because this and this these are keyed uh, this is what I'm going to want to hook into because if uh, I want those lights not to be on unless I have it turned on things like uh, this would be I think I've got the CB hooked up to it um, things like you want to stay on uh, no matter what that's what this is so this is unkeyed this is keyed so I'm gonna hook into somewhere down here uh, looks like nothing but leads coming into this one so I'll probably hook into this and I've got red for positive ground I'm going to uh, I can ground the lights and then I've got a switch so I'm going to run power from here to the switch and then to this in the other side of the switch so that power goes up flick the switch it turns on and turns the lights on Now the hardest decision for this light is I've got a really nice, I like this nice even setup, but now I need to add another switch. Uh, these are two horns, two windshield wipers. I am thinking of adding another horn, so I want to leave this spot here. And this is... Uh, this is the heated mirrors. This is the selector switch for the air horn or regular horn. These are the two for um, the two fans over the windshield. Directionals, right and left with the indicator lights. I don't think I want to put another light here. If I put it down here, I, I'm just this way when I'm driving I don't have to really look I can put my hand over here and I'm on the two switches if I somehow get over here I could think I'm turning on my uh, left hand directional where I'm actually turning on the new lights so maybe I think I'll put it down here so I got to do a little measuring put it here and then uh, when I get a chance I'll pick up another one of these to put it in and I'm not sure what I'm going to put up here. Um, I could have put in another light like these but what I did was I chose a lit switch this time. So this little blue light over here will let me know that I've got uh, these new driving lights on. So I'm going to, I think I'll put it in the middle. So let me drill that. Uh, I'm using a regular, uh, it's a made for wood, so it's got the little point on it, and uh, if I can get that nice and centered. So let me get that drilled, and then I'll pull this off and run some wires. The only difference between this and any other switch is the switch itself has to be grounded so that the, uh, the same power coming in will turn uh, the little blue on so let me do that and we'll add some wires and go from there that doesn't look that bad right there and uh, that beeping noise it doesn't really glow very bright but 
I'm thinking at night when I uh, really need it then uh, it'll glow more so let's take a look at what it looks like outside this is about 15 feet in front of the bus and they are pretty bright even uh, here it's about four in the afternoon I've got about three four hours uh, before dark but they are pretty low profile throw out a lot of light and we will get a shot of them after dark well, let's see how well these light up from the uh, inside that's just that's the lights on Well, as you can see from the video, these lights do a real good job eliminate, uh, illuminating out to about 50 feet in front of my bus the way I have them set up. They shine out quite a bit farther, considering the fact that my standard lights uh, only go out about 20 feet on high beam and then uh, real good illumination and then beyond that it's very sketchy. I go uh, into the backwoods and out into the desert where there are no street lights and uh, this these lights are definitely going to be a big improvement for me and a big help uh, so i give them a uh, big thumbs up